On today's Transport Evolved, making more i3s a double capacity Nissan Leaf, and Elon Musk is James Bond. Coming up next on Transport Evolved. Transport Evolved is sponsored by AudiblePodcast.com. To claim your free audiobook from a selection of over 85,000 growing titles for your iPod or MP3 player, head to www.audiblepodcast.com forward slash Transport Evolved. And by your kind donations. To make a gift to the show or to set up a monthly subscription, head to www.transportevolved.com. We thank you for your kind support. And proud to support Chronovirus, the latest book by long island author Aaron Crocco. To find out more and get a free chapter, head to www.aaroncrocco.com. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to episode number 170 of Transport Evolved, recorded on Sunday, October 20th, 2013. My name is Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And I'm Mark Chasley. How are you this week, Nikki? I'm doing... I'm, I'm okay. Excellent. Those... But, no, just, just okay or, or brilliant? Those of you who uh, follow me on Twitter, I am at A Minor Journey on Twitter, will know that I've been a little bit up and down this week personally in my personal life that is nothing to do with anything really other than just having adopted kids and, and coming to terms with the fact that sometimes some of the trauma Bye. they have to deal with they pass on to you and it's called secondary trauma and sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's absolutely horrible and sometimes you just you want to take take it all away but i am happy today because guess what mark wow this is an amazon kindle okay Ooh. um i broke it about six weeks ago you did. I remember you phoned me up. I broke it. Uh, but this is an Amazon Kindle and this is called Leaf Link. Uh, sorry, Leaf Link. Leaf Spy, uh, which is the pro version of Leaf Spy. I've now rooted my Amazon Kindle. I've got it running uh, an Amazon, uh, a, a modded um, Amazon ROM, which means I can now run the uh, Leaf Spy Pro on my Kindle Fire HD. Um, and it means I can track my car's gids, for those of you who are leaf drivers. I can track um, how many miles I've got till very low battery warning, temperature of my batteries. And I can even change when the doors lock and unlock. It's really cool, Mark. That is very funky. And and I will, I've been playing with it all afternoon. So there we go. Uh, if you if you do not uh, know what this, this wonderful app is, please go to the Amazon Marketplace. If you have an Amazon device and you have a, a, a leaf, I think it'd be very valuable to you. Leaf Spy, a little plug there for the guys who developed that. So, uh, Mark, how about you? I, I This week, oh, well, I literally got in my house about 20 minutes ago after recording the end of our latest audiobook for In-Ear Entertainment. So that was fun. Um, and I've got a week coming up of of hospital visits and, and then a convention at the end of the week. So it, it should be a fun week. Yay! Other than the beginning. Yay, yay. <laughs> Actually, and I think maybe we should note, we are not going to be here probably live next week, Mark. No. Um, we are on the road. There is an event coming up. It's a very cool event. We have been, what would you say? We've been officially, uh, unofficially invited. Does that make sense? Yeah, we, we, we've had a nod. A, we've a had a, a you're nod. on the guest list. <laughs> Keep this date free in London on Thursday. Uh, but we haven't had the official, we haven't had the official uh, invite yet. So maybe they don't want us to come. But we're if, just going to turn up. We're just going to turn up. Crash the party. It is involved in the EV world. Those of you who are in the UK probably know what it is. I'm not going to say any more in case it doesn't happen or it's been moved and we haven't been told. Uh, but if that goes ahead, we will be doing another on the road edition, won't we, Mark? We will. I like our on the road editions. Uh, and, and this time, to keep it steady, we'll be at the we'll be at the wheel of a Chevy Volt. Well, you'll be at the oh, wheel. Oh, uh, Never yeah. heard that. So our guests <laughs> today right are at the wheel of a <laughs> Chevy Volt. Right Indeed. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Brad Horton and Deb Seabor in the Woo! same place. Look. Brad Horton on the right. We, 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 I touch. <laughs> we touch. I feel like I should be clicking a like button on him, but he's, he's live. I can't do so that. I these can just guys, say, I like you. These I guys, like your posts. These guys have been on the, the show before individually, I think. I don't think you've been on together, have you? Nope. No, you've been on individually and, and, and you kind of uh, started talking on Facebook and um, Deb went, I've got to come and visit this Brad Horton guy and find out who the man is who makes the cool 
posts, right, on Facebook. And who drives a Volt? I got to drive his Volt earlier today. So, so how was we, it? We're taking some videos. I'm going to be bringing that back and posting it on my blog, Deb Goes Green, about what it's like to drive a Chevy Volt, especially right here in the heartland of America, right in the middle of the country. Um, but this has been so much fun, and I am pretty agog about the Volt. I like the uh, cockpit design. You kind of feel like you're taking off. Because it has it's a, very it's good. Like a Tesla that's got the screen. It's got actual physical buttons to push, and they light up all bright blue at night. It looks yeah. really cool at night. But so, if, in case you guys haven't figured out out there, we are in the vault. We're not only just Skyping, we're Skyping from the inside of Brad's vault. <laughs> Although it's the other way around, of course. It's mirror image for us in the UK. We're, we're used oh, to You right. are sitting where the driver would be sitting, Deb. Uh, it's oh, the other I way know. around. Well, we're all backwards here. You know that. What do you, we Yanks know anyway? The colonials. <laughs> That's that's become my main annoyance with Grand Theft Auto Five at the moment. As I keep getting into the car the wrong side, and it's it's now <laughs> infuriating I me. I, I never thought they of that. They don't either. have a UK version. No, oh, no, it's still supposed to be that city. And, yeah. yeah so. Okay. All right. Mark, I worry about you sometimes, <laughs> but you do know that the first Grand Theft Auto, I think, was based in the UK, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's a UK London. company. Rockstar's yeah, a UK yeah, company. Yeah, London. I just, do they still do the, we have gone down so many rat runs and we're only even like five minutes into the show. Does it still have the press play on tape at the beginning when you turn the no. game on? Oh, I missed that. Because oh. I think it was in third or fourth Grand Theft Auto, they put, they played a bootloader screen as if it was an old school cassette player. Okay. From, from you know, retro days. I mean, you know. They do have uh, radios, like a whole host, like a big circle of radio stations you can select from of all different kinds. Well, there you go. Keeping it keeping it old school. I feel old now. Anyway, so Deb, <laughs> for those laugh. of you who don't know, Deb is uh, Deb drives the, um, the little Zen car made famous by That's your music me. video. Deb is, in fact, a, a, a touring musician. How's the touring going? <laughs> live guitar in the car how how is the touring going deb how's the what well it's fine um i was actually brought out to chicago by the women construction owners and executives conference it is a group of women who own construction companies who have a trade organization and they found me because the title of my cd that has the electric car song is called mama wears a hard hat and one of them met my cousin in California who gave her my, her my CD and Vada Bing, Here I Am in Illinois. And I sang at their convention and got to participate. Uh -huh. And um, I thought, well, gosh, I'm in reasonable um, driving distance of Brad Horton. So here I am. It's a little closer than Seattle. And um, it's going very well. I also got the chance to visit the Fox Valley Electric Auto Association in Naperville. And they got to hear Little Zenkar live at their meeting. And I'm having a ball. This is like a great working vacation. It's always good. I mean, I I, I must admit, when I'm whenever I'm out and about, I always try mm -hmm. and combine some yeah. fun into my work based uh, stuff. Not that my work is not fun, but you know what I mean. It's just the idea of of, of adding a little bit of extra extra fun. Um, it's better to better to stay and visit people that you 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 want to stay and visit with rather than yeah. uh, stuck in some hotel room somewhere, right? Right. So um, we're gonna we're gonna come on to uh, the stories of the week, um, Mark. It's been a busy week, hasn't it? It, it has. There's been uh, well, maybe not lots of stories, but the the lots uh, a few a small amount of big stories, I'd say, rather okay. than or well, maybe not big stories in terms of revelations, but interesting stories, as of how I would put it. So if you want to take part in today's show, this is what you need to do. You need to go to www.transportevolve.com uh, forward slash live. You can do at Transport Evolve on Twitter or use the hashtag Transport Evolved. To see the show notes, you go to www.tinyurl.com forward slash Transport Evolved 170. Um, and uh, here today, we're going to start with BMW. BMW's Chief Financial Officer, Frederick Eichner said this week that the BMW i3 has proving, is proving so popular that over 8,000 reservations have been made in its home markets in Europe. Um, I think that's just Germany, actually. And uh, that means that uh, BMW might end up making more cars because it only ever planned to make 10,000 cars in the first year. Mark, yeah. we were so horrible about the BMW, weren't we, in the early days? <laughs> we, we, we weren't. Hor yeah, we were. We It looked awful. It did look awful. The photos of it, it looked stubby and squished and, and like they chopped the front of the snout of the car off. And, and then we saw it in person. 
and it just looks good. It yeah, just like looks it. good. Yeah. Now, um, Deb, uh, actually, this week it was in it was in um, Seattle, your your home home city. So uh, you missed it. I know because I was here. But hey, you know. <laughs> so yeah, um, a trade off. BMW i3. Do you think it's a look at? I mean, Brad, you've you've said you like it. I mean, I'm not I'm not in love with it, but I've always appreciated new innovative designs. I'm tired of cars always looking the same. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I I mean, I buy that. I mean, obviously the the Volt the Volt looks different. The 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 Leaf and the Prius are very similar in their design, aren't they? The way that they look, the way that they uh, they, Second they sit gen on the Prius road. just broke ground as far as looks if you ask yeah. me. It just looked like a spaceship when it came out. And now the yeah, exactly. I mean, I love that's my favorite of the Prius. I don't like the current generation Prius. I think it's a bit <sighs> I think the, the second gen was lovely and that's probably why we went second gen Prius to the leaf to be honest um but um this uh, order books haven't even opened in uh the us yet for the i3 what do we think is going to happen in 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 uh, in the states do we think buyers are going to go yeah actually i would quite like a strange stroke unusual stroke novel stroke different looking car put choose the word that best suits your buyer um do you think they would choose that car over something that looks a little bit more mainstream a little bit more staid i mean the the vault was designed to look quite conventional wasn't Normal. it yeah, yeah. depends on that's... where you are in the country and who you are if you're probably on any of the coasts where you have a lot of crazy artist types i don't know any of those um they would go for it but maybe i don't know brad we're from different well, worlds here uh, I would gauge it by the active E4 yeah. uh, people. They seem to be really on board with the i3. Some of them want to hold out for, I guess, the, the i5, is it? The the bigger one. Yep. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think that it'll be a huge quantity thing, at least at first. But I think that yeah, those yeah. people will definitely be probably buying those. Mark? Then again, how cars look oh. are so subjective. Most people look at my Zen and go, oh, that is the cutest little car. But then I was in a restaurant once eating breakfast, and I heard some guy in a loud voice going, Oh my gosh, what is that ugly, ugly car? And he said it the whole breakfast, you know, house. And I was just laughing and he was going, who drove that thing? And it turns out he was a real Chevy Corvette fan. So he liked, you know, just like little boxy cars. But it was, I, I, t I walked up and said, congratulations. So you were the first person who has hated my car. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I said, do you want to come out and see it? And of course he wanted to see the whole thing. So, you know. <laughs> Hey, there's, that's that's evangelism in, it, that's the best sort of evangelism, isn't it? Come out and see the car. And then you show them the car and then they go, oh, actually, it's not too yeah, bad. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was in, um, it was an Ikea car park in um, in London uh, where they have a rapid charger. And uh, there was a guy that had pulled up in a Maserati um, and he was parked in the EV charging bay. And when he came out, I was really kind of cross. I was like quite curt with him you need to move it we you know this is an ev space and i ended up talking to him and he was really keen on the car and i ended up telling him to go and 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 go and look up the model s which i think he probably did um because a couple of weeks later i'm sure i i picked him up as a twitter follower somebody you know recognize i recognized the face and i'm thinking i was rude to well, this man he, a couple he of weeks would ago. not get away with that anymore in the state of washington because we recently passed and um the seattle electric vehicle association was part of the group lobbying for this it's the de-icing bill ice internal combustion engine if you now park in washington state in a ev only zone you get fined 250 dollars so that's one of our big accomplishments for this year so far. Yep, we don't have it yet, but I hope we get it soon. Uh, back to the back to the i three. One of the things that's interesting is this this figure BMW said eight thousand reservations. Um, it hasn't said how many of those are for regular cars and how many. <laughs> Uh, what I, when I say regular, I mean plug in, no petrol. <laughs> I should probably ca categorize Thank that. So and how many yes. are for the yeah. weird Rex one, the range extending? We, we've talked about this at great length before, and I don't see a point in the range extended version of the i3 because it's got DC rapid charging built in. And at that point, you kind of go, well, at that point, at that point, you're going to be able to make most of the trips somewhere, you know, without is, having to worry about it. it the DC rapid charging is an optional extra, I believe. And and at the moment, it's a standard that hasn't been rolled out in the UK and I don't think has been rolled out in the US yet. Yeah, uh, we're because starving. <laughs> the, so, the trips I've made... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just saying, so, so I, from that point of view, I, it, it's like they've gone back three years. 
So in, instead of going with a standard that's already got a network rolled out where someone walking into the showroom would, would go, sorry, room would go, well, I don't need to have the engine in there as well because I already know there's this network. They're essentially starting from scratch again by adopting a new standard. Even if that is the agreed standard, it's they've they've gone back three years in, mm. in EV world. Um, there are there are some combo DC stations popping up. I think there's a couple now on the West Coast. But but that's about it. It's a bit like the Chadamo ones were in the early days. Yeah, because I and mean, well, right now everything on the West Coast on the um, interstate is um, is the Chadamo standard. There are a couple. I'd forgotten about that. Um, I'm sort of fascinated that Tesla, who's been very proprietary, I love Teslas, love them, but they've had their whole ho- own Tesla charging network, but they've now come out with an adapter you can buy. Yep. I don't even want to know how much it costs, but they're finally sort of recognizing that, you know, there's a lot of yep. Teslas on the West Coast and uh, that maybe they would like to be able to charge into some of the public DC charging stations. The, it's um, it's going to be very interesting. If any Tesla owners from my neck of the woods are tuning in, maybe you can type in to Nikki and tell her. <laughs> well, it's a thousand, a thousand dollars, I think, for that adapter. Yeah, it we covered oh, it in the show. We covered yeah. that in the show it's last like week, actually. Went. But you know, it's 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 it is you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when the when the i three order books open in yeah. the US uh, next month. All right, moving what? on, Seattle, well, um, two thousand and thirteen auto show has just been called. The EV lovers paradise, Deb. This is this must be a bit of a bit of a celebration for for Seattle, right? Yes. <laughs> my water. I'm drinking my water. My morning so water. Um, the they, there were seven plug-in cars in attendance. Um, mm-hmm. Tesla Model S, Ford Focus Electric, and Ford C Max Energy. Obviously, they're already on the market, but there were also um, sort of Pacific Northwest debuts of the i3 and Cadillac ELR, um, and a couple of other vehicles as well. Now, we haven't had an auto show in the UK, not a big auto show in London for a long time. We have, obviously, the, the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which is about as close as we get, right, Mark? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. We, we, I don't know why we don't do that, because it would be fun, but I, I suppose we're very close to Europe and it's easy for us to get to Paris and Frankfurt and those places. Except it's really expensive. You'll notice I've never <laughs> gone... Yeah, to, but, yeah, but to any mean, of the European relative motor in terms shows, of distance, it's actually quite close. Anyway, um, so I have to ask you, Deb, because obviously you're on the show. Mm-hmm. Why is Seattle so pro EV when other parts of the US are not? I mean, Brad, I'm guessing you're completely envious of of Seattle's pro EV ness in 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 because you're in Illinois, aren't you? Yeah, I, I'm envious of many many cities. You know, EV friendliness, but well, I mean, we have a pretty EV friendly city. It's just not as big as Seattle, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, normal EV town, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, that's part of why I think BMW uh, has the range extender thing is because um, just as a, an option anyway, which I don't even know if the first ones are going to have the option uh, anyway, um, is just so that you don't, you can just stop. There's gas stations on every exit of the interstate out here. But um, here you just don't have the fast charger network or even level twos very, very often. So not yet. In answer to your question, Nikki, I think, first of all, Seattle, Washington, we've got Boeing. We're heavy on engineers. We've got Microsoft. We're heavy on the um, tech things. We're a very techy engineering and we're also a very arty imaginative city and the other so people are into new like you were saying in new designs we like new interesting weird stuff yeah but sometimes i also think this is good this now that's what i think your average person would say what i'm going to say is it rains a lot where i live and when it rains a lot you stay indoors and you go to coffee shops and when you stay indoors you've got to kind of make things to entertain yourself so i, I think that <laughs> a lot of that innovation <laughs> That, I sort of believe that maybe the, the physical <laughs> environment, I don't know, it's probably a really weird woo, 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 woo theory, but I, I think when you're sort of stuck inside raining, you, you get creative. I you see, we just play, get, we cool. just get, we just get, what do we, I don't know, Bristol, we get quite, we get a lot of rain because uh, and we, I suppose yeah. we consider ourselves Britain's, I suppose we are the equivalent of Britain's Portland or, or, or Seattle in terms That's of. That's what I've read and what you've, I've sort of said that Bristol's very creative stuff. I don't know, but I think it's, I really think it's heavy. Be, you know, it's the engineers and the computer guys. But I have to tell you, we were filming the other day in town, Mark and I sitting in a leaf driving along. And Mark got really excited that he could go into the HOV lane with two people in the leaf. Because over here, we don't have HOV lane priority for EVs. So we were going, oh, we're in the HOV lane in a leaf. Um, we so, don't have many HOV lanes. We to don't be fair. have that the many. Bristol one's the only ones I know of. Yeah. 
But uh, anyway, maybe maybe the uh, Pacific Northwest needs to teach the rest of the world. I know that in the UK, Mark and I have had some conversations recently, haven't we, Mark, about how scary EV things are getting in the UK because sales seem yeah. to be not really going anywhere. Um, yeah. There's talk of the government subsidies ending, you know, trying to get charging networks installed. It's still an uphill struggle. And and, and vandalism of vandalism. charging stations and things like that. People unplug in cars and it's, it, it all, yeah, it's odd. As, as a country, our identity seems to be fighting against change, which is really odd because change is wonderful, but... Yeah, maybe that's just oh, me. You guys have higher costs for your fuel too. Yeah, we yeah. do. We do, <laughs> which is bizarre. But Mark, you were travelling back today. You were worried because you you thought a charging station on the way from mine back to yours had been vandalised. Was it okay? Yeah, it, it worked. The the connectors broke. The Chadamo connector. I don't know if people are using it wrong or it's being abused somehow. But the you you kind of put the for those who've not used it, you put the big Chadamo. Uh, yeah. plug into your socket and then you pull a lever up which kind of sucks the two together and then they kind of latch together the lever now on, on the two rapid chargers near me doesn't work it's been snapped essentially so it doesn't connect to anything so to make this thing connect you have to press the release button first to make sure it's actually un unsucked itself and then you have to push it in which is a a mechanism it doesn't want to do because it's expecting the lever to be pulled up so it's actually quite hard to get your car to connect to these charging stations because the chadamo connector is being misused or abused i don't know how the breakages are happening well it's happening a lot i don't know if it's just the design in the uk but we do have a lot of stations seemingly go down quite frequently anyway moving on to things that go down and break frequently ford now, I don't know. In the US, do you guys have all of those acronyms for Ford? Like found on road, found on road dying, dead, dead. dead. Pair daily. Yeah. That's, that's those yeah, are two. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Peter Stokes in Colorado, for teaching me those terms. See, my friend Peter's an auto mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, this is the story that we covered earlier this week. Ford, my, my Ford mobile app, um, which Ford had brought out for Apple iPhone owners. Um, they brought it out uh, shortly after iOS 7 came out. iOS 7 obviously being the latest, debatably the greatest, I wouldn't necessarily agree, the latest operating <laughs> system from Apple, <laughs> iOS 7. Um, and once you've, once you've upgraded to, to, <laughs> once you've upgraded to iOS 7, it's very difficult to downgrade your phone back. Um, although having someone who has just rooted her Kindle and turned it from a brick <laughs> into a working, I thought I'd broken it. It's taken me six days. Um, maybe you can, but it's not particularly easy to to downgrade it. But this iOS 7 app that Ford's released um, breaks the communications, breaks... It, it doesn't work, basically. It, it To use an eBay term, as I think we said in the show on Friday, it powers on and looks good. And then it promptly powers itself off and the app stops working and you're back to your, your Apple... Um, Home screen. Home screen. Um, and it's left people without a functioning way of connecting their to their, their Ford Focus EVs. Um, and Ford's been kind of very kind of, well, we've pulled the app. We're going to work on it. Um, we yeah. believe it was developed in collaboration with Microsoft, which is and the other did, oopsie. Oh, <laughs> they did say was it was um, an, an old bug-filled version of the app which wasn't meant to be released, at which point you're like, well, that's fine. Then just release the version that was meant to be released. Uh, uh, but that hasn't appeared. So that seems to have been kind of a excuse rather than anything well, the else. The other thing that, that bugs me is Ford has the My um, my C-Max, it's the same basically, the same app, but for the C-Max hybrid, the C-Max Energy, sorry, that version works just fine and it's got the same functionality as the Ford Focus app was supposed to have. So you, you have to question why why one well, of the apps got through and one of them didn't, why, why one was the working you- version. If you update your phone, your old apps work anyway. So I don't know why they don't just roll back the version on the on the market for now and let people download the old app. Well, it just won't be updated for iOS seven particularly. It'll right. still work. Well, what what uh, Ford has said is, oh, if you've got a version of iOS, if, if you've got iOS six, keep it. Use the old app. I'm not sure if the old version works with iOS seven. I think that's where part of the problem came, Mark. Oh. I, I don't know, I because I, I don't have it on my phone. And, and details uh, that I was able to discover just say new version of app breaks. And I do know there were apps that had to be upgraded 
to work on iOS 7. So I, I Many, about about a third of my um, iPad apps had to be upgraded to optimized for OS 7 optimized. So something this always happens when they change systems, whether it's Windows yeah. or Mac. Well, well, do you remember me telling you what happened with the Vault and the Windows Mobile app? I mean, what happened there originally was they just wouldn't support Windows Mobile, and a lot of people are buying Windows Mobile phones now, and they somebody made an app for it, and he ended up getting a cease and desist letter. And then it took Chevy like a year to come along and make another app, and it was terrible when it, when it came out. I don't know what it's up to now, but... Well. I mean, Nissan's had the same issue, and I think this is why you need to support open vehicle monitoring system, Mark. Yeah, uh, I I don't, I don't use the official Leaf um, version of the app. There's a much nicer version out there, and and yet there's there's a um, uh, open vehicle monitoring system is is just about um, getting some Leaf support now. Yeah, so I'm going to be installing that in my car this week, hopefully. There's some there's some beta code out there, and although I mean, those who want to take part, the beta code is beta code it's not uh, you know open vehicle monitoring system is for hobbyists it's not for people who who, who don't mind tinkering who don't mind playing with their electronics or their, or their software or whatever it's not necessarily a consumer ready product per se but it's certainly well, for some cars for, yeah who've got the 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 code that's in release state but yeah for the leaf at the moment it's still in development yeah um i've got a couple of people say the app uh, that Ford app is now back, apparently. The, the the older version is back, I think. Um, so moving on. Ford executives this week kind of admitted, oh, yeah, it's all about hybrids. It's not really about plug-ins and not really about electrics. And this is the, this is the dumb bit. Ford has this strategy, which is we will produce a model of car and then we'll figure out how to put all the different drivetrains in. So the idea being that on the production line, same production line, you b- produce exactly the same chassis and, and monocoque, and then you just bolt in the drivetrains as required. Now, at the moment, the result of that has been, I don't know if anyone's seen in the back of the Ford C-Max um, uh, Energy. I was really disappointed. It is essentially supposed to be a bit like a crossover, almost like a crossover mini wagon stroke um uh wagon style car but the boot the trunk uh load bay is really high because the batteries are in the back the ford focus electric great looking car drives fantastically lift the trunk up oh there's a battery pack and ford's basically gone oh yeah that's that's just how it's going to be from now on uh, until <laughs> at least we figure out ford is uh, sort of reading between the lines ford's attitude is until we know that people are going to buy this in its in in the droves. We're not going to make a bespoke car. We're just but, going but to. But surely it's the what they're doing is they're actually making the car with a engine in mind, and then they're trying to retrofit a hybrid and a battery system in there. But surely just, the the, the right. logical way is to do it the other way around. If you designed right. it for an electric motor, you have extra space where components don't exist. Like like Tesla has shown, you end up with a frunk as well as a trunk. Yeah. So yeah. design well, it for the battery, and then I enjoy the bolt is because they did electric first. Ford kind of does it the other way around. Same with the plug-in Prius. You just don't get all the power from. No, you don't. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, and I, it just makes sense to do it the other way around. I think design it for the battery pack. You end up with lots of free space in the car, and then it's easy to drop a petrol engine into that or a diesel engine into that using the space, rather than doing it the other way around and and sticking batteries in the boot, which throws out your suspension, your weight equalization. Mm-hmm. It, it's silly. Uh, by the way. I just want to, before we go to our ad break, this is not in the show notes, but I'm just going to point this out. This is Grant Thomas, who's been on the show before. He's based down in Southampton in the UK. Um, down on the, on the South Coast today, they've had an EVSE build day, um, basically building a portable charging unit for your electric car. And this one is uh, fantastic. You'll see it here. It's got a 32 amp blue commando socket, uh, a little box of tricks. And then the other end, you've got your your J1772 cable. And this means that you can plug in at any uh, 32 amp, 240 volt outlet. Brilliant. This is Pretty this cool. is ultimately, you know, we've got an, this juxtaposition, the juxtaposition of this versus what Ford is saying is, is, com- is so clear. Ford is going, oh, it's really difficult. And if we want to do it, we're going to have to build an old car. And we have to di- design it from scratch. And we're not, well, it's the... <laughs> And, yeah, and, and you know the DIY community is coming along and going, uh, 
Hello. <laughs> well, so all the, all the manufacturers selling those ten amp two two forty volt ten amp uh, cables with a big brick on them for eight hundred pounds or four hundred pounds or seven hundred pounds or whatever they are. The the price range is huge, and then people hobbyists are coming along and doing this with a thirty two amp connector. And, is, is and awesome. much cheaper. Uh, and let's much cheaper. let's go to an ad break, Mr. Aaron Croco. It was supposed to be just another cargo run, but for Ken Mallory and the three-person crew of the Raven, an anomaly in deep space changes everything. An unexpected turbulence shakes the small ship like never before, allowing a deadly virus aboard. One by one, the infected crew is thrown back in time to relive a near-death experience, only this time, death may be closer than they remember. My short story, Chronovirus, is available for Amazon Kindle, Barnes & Noble Nook, Kobo, iBooks, Sony, and for all other devices and e-readers through Smashwords. Learn more about Chronovirus by visiting my website at www.aaroncroco.com. Ooh, very, very good book. If you haven't read it, go and read it now. It's about an hour long. You can listen to it in the when you're driving the car. And the ending... Oh, the ending! Oh! Um... <laughs> I, I also have to say that last week's Audible Pick of the Week, um, uh, sorry, the previous week's Audible Book of, book of the Week, which was, um, uh, um, what was it called? It was Bedlam. I'm nearly finished with that, and it's a great book as well, so you should get that as well. Audible's coming up in a bit, though, so I'm not going to confuse it. Right, sales figures around Europe for the Tesla Model S during the month of September was about a 1,000 cars. Nissan Leaf across Europe in September, same month, 1,175. Wow. What do we say that's to a... that? It's, it's, that's phenomenal. Does this, does this mean that Europeans have to have a high spec, long range luxury car before they'll consider dumping diesel? Because diesel over here, we've got 50% market share of diesel engines. Diesel is, 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 gives people the, the higher um, gas mileage. We know that diesel is not clean, but diesel is sold as being clean over here. Everyone goes, yeah, diesel, clean diesel. Yeah, it's better than petrol. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get involved in that argument because there are so many ways we can debunk it. But does a car, is the, is the Model S the car that needs to come along before people start taking electric cars seriously in Europe, Mark? I think it's marketing. I seriously do. Uh, everyone knows who Tesla is. I can speak to anyone on my street. And they know who Tesla is. They know they may not they may not know that the Model S exists, but they know Tesla as a company makes electric cars. They go much further than anyone else who makes electric cars. I talk to them about my Leaf, and the first question I get is, "So it's a hybrid?" Yeah. Well, or, it, that's where part does the petrol go? And and uh, Nissan hasn't advertised. They they there are so few adverts for all of these electric cars that are out the the people who are in the dealerships don't talk about the electric cars because they don't know about the electric cars and i honestly think a lot of it is down to to marketing tesla puts money into marketing they're all about electric cars and that's been reflected in sales figures there is in fact only one dealership one nissan dealership i can think of and it's my favorite nissan dealership um and the way you pull into the dealer lot you have to kind of go down a side street and then turn right and as you turn right into the dealer lot the first car you see in the showroom opposite you as you come in is a leaf and you go around. It is the back end of a leaf. No, it's not. It's the front end of a leaf. You do see the front of a leaf, front end, front end of a leaf and you come around and you park fancy. up. But when you walk into the dealership, obviously the leaf's not the first car you see because the, the, the entrance for, for people is, is the other side. But, but when you drive in, the first thing you see is a leaf. And then when you park up outside the, the entrance, the first thing you see is the rapid charger so that dealership really does work very hard but most dealerships no the leaf's kind of hidden away at the back um the charging station very often is hidden around the back and sometimes they say that's you know to prevent vandalism or whatever but it normally just doesn't get as much attention that the model s as you quite rightly say mark people know what the model s is they know the car it oozes that kind of prestige feel that i think a lot of people love obviously the other thing is those tax incentives in Norway um, do make yeah. it 
such a decent buy. I mean, we talked about this last week, Norway and the Netherlands. People are buying cars secondhand. People are selling on, they've gone on the waiting list, they put their name down, they then sell the car for seven, eight, nine thousand uh, profit and someone gets a brand new Tesla Model S that's maybe got 20, 30 kilometres on it. The other person gets a seven or eight thousand or nine thousand um, euro or dollar uh, investment reward, uh, return on their investment. So I think that the challenge though, and I think the thing we should caveat here, the Leaf has been on sale in Europe now for nearly two years. The Model S has only just gone on sale. Uh-huh. Mark? Well, yes, there is that. But the model, the Leaf has had a model revision, has had updates. And uh, yeah, the Model S is a new car, but also there are, uh, I suppose there's the competition at any level. Uh, yeah. Deb, what do you think? Um, I'm still jazzed as to your numbers. See, and I'm coming from a part of the world up in the Pacific Northwest where um, east side Nissan in Bellevue, Washington, which is across the lake from Seattle, is the largest Nissan Leaf dealership in the country, which even kind of has them going, wow, you know, here we are in little Bellevue, Washington. Well, Bellevue's not that little anymore, but the people are coming from different states to get that. And it's funny to hear from my perspective that there's so few Leaf advertisements because we've got Leaf advertisements all over the place where I live. I mean, they're on the billboards, they're in the magazines, or even in the papers. So Maybe Nissan is just targeting the West Coast because we're closer to Japan. I don't know. Um, And, I mean, you can't drive five blocks in Seattle anymore without seeing at least one leaf. And it just keeps getting to be more and more. Okay. So, you know what happens? You know what happened this morning? Uh, we were what driving in for breakfast. My son did an opera yesterday. Janacek, the little vixen, cunning little vixen. I just had to say that because I was really proud of him and he was a fox cub and he was a badger and it was brilliant. Anyway, yeah. so to, 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 to treat the kids, we went out to breakfast this morning and I was driving through town in a loner Lissan leaf that we happen at the moment, have at the moment. And, um, there was another Lissan leaf coming the other way. And I went, Oh, look, it's a Nissan leaf. Oh, look, it's person person's name i turned to my wife and went yeah when you can name the driver of the (laughs) leaf that you just went past there really aren't enough of them in town (laughs) so deb i think that would be more of a challenge for you right name all the leaf drivers in your neighborhood oh my gosh i mean just in the last three years years I, I, i bought my zen five years ago there were no leafs there was the tesla roadster but the model s wasn't happening the volts was sort of this weird start rumor and and all of a sudden, in 2011, there were these leaves around, and I was just, just on the way to the airport airport to come on this trip. I think I passed six leaves, and I see Teslas in the wild, and we also have some volts that I see cruising around up there. So I think it goes back to the why is Seattle so EV-friendly. And um, at SeaTac Airport, there is an electric car charging bay on the sixth, the, excuse me, the fifth floor of the SeaTac International Airport. And it used to be that no one was parked there. Now you can't get a space to park in your car long term. Wow. So, um, no, we can no longer name people in well, the, our region that have these things. We here just, in this area, we got none. Like when it comes to <laughs> well, that's easy then. <laughs> I didn't see any in Chicago. I mean, that surprised me. I thought maybe up in Chicago, major city, I'd see some. St. Louis, I see them. But the funny thing about the locally is that the dealer really does believe in them. And he tried to sell them. It's from Casey Summers or something. And um, it sat there on the lot forever. And he ended up, he's like, well, I, you know, cars got to be driven a little bit. I'm going to try taking it home. And then he ended up driving it a bunch. Ended up, he bought it. He loves it. (laughs) The dealer owner. (laughs) is the one guy around here who has a leaf. So, well, One thing that we've talked a lot about the Seattle Electric Vehicle Association is a lot of dealers, they are reluctant to sell electric cars because it, you're going to have to bring new training and new staff on board to understand these things, and then you're going to sell this car that doesn't need any service, so they're not going to make service make any money off the service that you normally do on a a gas petrol car so a lot of dealers are really resistant because they have people that come into their stores whether it's the chevy place or the nissan place and people are like oh i really want a volt but it's a little too expensive sell me your chevy cruise or whatever it is and um there is some pushback on the dealers and i think of course you know how many dealers have been 
um, trying to lobby to not allow Tesla to sell their car directly right. because it's right. very, very threatening. And really quickly, I just want to tell and you. And not all dealers, though, but, you know. I like totally flipped one day because I saw another that. Volt. And I was like, oh, my God, another Volt, another Volt. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, wait, that's just my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I saw one Chevy Volt on my way down here. I don't know who it was. It was about 150 miles up the road. Did I tell you that? No. No, it was a um, wasn't it was a red one. Is that your dad? Well, yeah, but he wouldn't be up there. No, so. he, he wouldn't be up in wherever that was town that I couldn't spell. Yeah, it ver- out here <laughs> it varies greatly. Like yeah. 50 miles is all the difference. So I was, that is, that is surprised brilliant. in the dense city of Chicago being a major metropolitan cosmopolitan. I thought I'd see a few electric cars around, and I saw none. Lots huh. of hybrids, all no. the taxi cabs. But um, so I'm just kind of quietly curious about that myself bizarre uh, for those who are who are watching um i do apologize there seems to be some some lag coming from um from our guests um you've, you've your video well, has got very the juttery vault. it volts electric it's zipping we're, things we're yeah. very close to the router I yeah, don't know. yeah, you're very juttery suddenly. Anyway, we'll keep going. All right, we're going to bash through a couple of these stories really quickly. Uh, Fisker gets sold to a Hong Kong tycoon investor group. Um, basically means that the Fisker loan got sold. Um, so uh, Fisker can now kind of try to get its feet back on the ground. And Bob Lutz. I one. Sorry? I bought a Fisker. <laughs> I'll try Woo! <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, I'm sorry. That's I, brilliant. I was going to execute that better, but I know that we're lagging, so I didn't want to interrupt yeah. you. Bad. <laughs> it's awesome to be proud of Fisker. I actually have a Tesla myself. It's about this big. I don't yeah. have it with me. Yeah. <laughs> but when I got to visit the factory last year, they gave us little complimentary plastic Teslas. So actually, I have two. So you mean, do you mean one of one of these? Yeah, I have one of the, I have two of those. <laughs> Mine's covered in dust. Tesla, I'm sorry. I have a silver one and I have a there black one. <laughs> I feel left out. So we'll, well get you there I'm, one day, Mark. Today I'm an honorary Volt owner. Brad's letting me wear his Volt owner's badge for the day. <laughs> All right. Well, let's okay. move. My, my little Zen car, she'll be jealous. Yes, I know. She won't talk to you when you get back. Uh, so Bob Lutz wants, he, he basically is really keen to turn uh, Karma's into the 2014 Destino VL. Or VL yeah. Destino. Don't have that. We'll see. Bob Lutz, the father of the Volt, wants to mm-hmm. take a car with a range extended engine and take it out and take the batteries out and take the electric motor out and put a huge, great big uh, Corvette engine in. I, I'm sure they'll sell. The, the car is a very attractive looking car, but mm, I tell you what I'd rather do, though. This is the next story. Nissan, 48 kilowatt hour battery pack in a Nissan Leaf. Ooh, <gasps> Sweet. So um, yeah. how how this works is there was uh, 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 the the Eco Series Marathon uh, race series in in Spain, uh, the last race of the season. Some guys from and hopefully some girls as well from Nissan Technical Center in Barcelona uh, took down a Nissan Leaf which they had retrofitted with with a forty eight kilowatt hour battery pack. Now it's not quite clear at this point whether it was just another battery pack that they'd put in in addition to the existing normal one or whether this was a you know, one that was the same weight and size as the existing pack, but maybe a different chemistry. So it was twice as energy dense. Um, but it came second in, in the Eco uh, Series uh, season uh, or the, that race of the Eco Series season. Uh, but I'm thinking, what would a 48 kilowatt hour leaf feel and drive like? Um, and Mark, would you want one? Uh, I don't know if I could afford one, whether I'd want one. Yes. I, I like my Leaf. I really do. I find it comfortable to drive. I find it nice to drive. And if I could get more batteries in my Leaf, it would definitely be something I'd look at. Which takes us back to our that earlier conversation about manufacturing. Uh, the dealerships can't sell um, service mm. to, to EVs. Mm-hmm. So sell me upgrades instead. I'm so much more interested in upgrades. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Doubling a battery pack would be an amazing upgrade to have. But but without mm-hmm. preempting our we haven't filmed this on the same day episode of, <laughs> of the quick yeah. charged uh, or the charged up um, we we've had this week Mark and I have been driving the the Nissan Leaf Vizier and the Nissan Leaf Tecna the, which is equivalent to the base model in the US and the top model in the US I've forgotten the names I think it's the S and the S 
V or the SL, I can't remember. You guys um, get the cool sounding names. We get the cool sounding names. Um, but Mark and I really liked the base model Leaf. It didn't yeah. have the touchscreen display. It just had a basic AM, FM, CD player thing. Okay, it had Bluetooth mm-hmm. and USB, so it wasn't quite so basic. But it was a just really clean car. Both of them are sat on my driveway at the moment, Mark. And, and I'm, I've got to decide which one to take tomorrow to do some errands. And I keep looking at the base one going, do you know what? I might just take the base one because it just felt a little bit more... A little bit less luxurious and a little bit more practical. Go out and yeah, it's almost like you, I, you, you don't mind um, getting that one dirty. I, I, it was it was a lovely car. It shocked me. It really did. And I, yeah, it was the base model. I re- really grew on me. I loved it. But Nissan unfortunately hasn't said whether the forty eight kilowatt hour battery pack that was in this test car would ever actually make it into production. But Please, Nissan, please do it. I would love to have a car with a range of battery options. Tesla's doing it. Mitsubishi's done it, although Mitsubishi not so successfully. Sorry, uh, Deb? I was going to say, everyone say one, two, three. Go, Nissan. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially because the boot in the Leaf is huge anyway. I'm quite willing to sacrifice some of the boot space for more batteries. Uh, I would only do it if the ride and, and handling was not affected, and that would be my biggest concern. All right. After coming, after coming, after confirming the Soul EV will head to the US and Europe um, last week. Sorry, I've got contact lenses and I can't read so clearly when I've got my contact lenses. In I can't read my show notes. Um, the uh, the uh, someone in uh, Kia UK admitted this week that the Soul EV will be a car which is not priced to drive demand. I.e., it won't be a competitively priced car. It won't be a car that's priced to make people go, "Yes, I'm going to buy an electric." Kia Soul, it's more a case of, yes, we're going to make it and it will probably be expensive as heck. And yes, it's going to be a limited market car. And yeah, you don't want to ask how much it's going to cost. And can you say compliance car? (laughs) Are compliance cars really useful? Um, I did a post recently saying they are. They are quite useful. And I I stand by that. I think compliance cars help drive the market. If I've got money and I want to choose between a compliance car and a non-compliance car, I'll buy the non-compliance car. But I think compliance cars give your average non-electric car fan a a good choice of market vehicles of, of vehicles to buy. They also help make the those who are really keen and interested in selling EVs offer more features, make the specs better, make it a bigger battery pack, make it go further. Um, so, what, what do you think, uh, Brad and? Um, and Deb, what do you think? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've had quite a few, um, I don't know, back and forth. I wouldn't call them arguments, but with like GM people and the Spark EV being somewhat of a compliance car. And they just hate that term. They get so angry or, you know, just perturbed whenever you try to call it a compliance car. But um, they have no official game plan of taking it to the national market. Like with the Volt, at least with the market release, they said, okay, well, in such time, then it'll be available nationwide. They did the same with the Leaf. With Spark, there's just they have no information about it. It's like, well, we made X amount. It's for sale in California, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm always for an EV on the road, but... I don't like the, I call it geographic discrimination. <laughs> I like that. I, I like that. I would second that. It's very frustrating um, to know that, oh, this is a great product out there. Oh, but I have to go all the way to California or New York or something. And um, it, just, it seems kind of dis- discriminatory. It's, it's and, almost like um, a broadband, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like the whole broadband thing where if you pay more, you get more width, blah, 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 blah. I mean, why can't they just do it differently i mean just to give you an idea mark lives 25 miles up the road from me don't you mark yeah. 25 it's, miles almost exactly coming the back way it's it's almost 25 miles up the road from me it is quicker for mark to um to to do some work a video on his computer put it on an external hard drive get in his car drive to my house figure out how to transfer it from his hard drive onto my hard drive, which invariably ends up there being a, a problem because of the software we use. It throws a hissy fit. And two hours mm-hmm. later, it's on the internet. That's actually quicker, isn't it, Mark? Than, than me you uploading it. Uploading it at yours. Um, An episode of 10 would take me 20 hours to upload. Yeah. Whereas it, it would take me. me it takes you, it Nikki, 20 minutes? It takes me about 20 minutes, yeah. I've got 120 down and, and 12 up, and you've got. Oh. Two I've got down? two and a half down and half up. 
it's just that's, anyway well, let's it's crazy because i pay i pay like three times as much for my um deb my web design my deb works business plan through comcast with because i have to have wider broadband or it's almost four times as much as i do for my home service i'm kind of like that's is that fair i mean i don't know no not at all mark tell us about audibles Audible. I, I've got to do a time marker first. Give me two seconds. Okay. Audible. Audible is an online service where you can get audiobooks. And I know there are quite a few people out there who are quite snobby about audiobooks and don't like them. But I have never met someone who has tried them and hasn't then become you know, a major fan of them. Do you know what, Mark? My my mum, bless her, she's got glaucoma and she's also developing cataracts. And she's recently been in hospital. And last time I was there to take her down to hospital, I went, you know what, mum, I can see that you're struggling to read. She's got a Kindle and she has the text. Every time I go, the text gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Sorry, mum. Yeah. I know you watch this. But anyway, I got my mum audible and she was kind of a bit like, hmm, eh, hmm, I'm not sure about this. And then she listened. And at this week, she's she's consumed a book in a week, bless her. She's yeah. really enjoying it. It's, it's true, isn't it? You just listen to it everywhere. And they're amazing. And it, 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 if you don't have time to read, it's a wonderful way to get through books. Audible is a system where you pay a certain amount each month. And for that certain amount, you get a certain number of credits. Audiobooks on the site generally cost one credit and they are yours. Once you've paid for them, they are yours. You keep them on your computer and you can play them on your computer or on uh, smartphones. They have to go through the Audible app. They have a bajillion different types of books. They have every type of book you can possibly think of and pretty much every major release will be on there and even very obscure things like old BBC sitcoms are on there yeah. as well yeah. and you can work your way through them. Um, if you go to audiblepodcast.com forward slash transport evolved and sign up there you'll get a month for free which is one free audiobook even if you decide not to go forward you get to keep that audiobook and we get a little bit of money for sending you their way and this week we are recommending an awesome book. Um, have, which you, have you heard this one? I did, and and it was responsible for me driving to places, listening to it, and having to park around the corner from where I was going to, and just sit there for three or four minutes and collect myself again. It's that emotional. Do you, do you it's want amazing. to tell us about it? It's 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 called it's called The Fault in Our Stars. It's written by John Green, who you may know as one of the vlog brothers online. They were probably one of the first YouTube celebrities of Lob Brothers and John Green's one of them. He's amazing. Uh, it's narrated by a lovely lady called Kate Rudd. And the book is about young kids, sort of 16, 17, 15 year old kids who have cancer or some sort of terminal illness. And it's based around their support groups and the relationships they form. And it's it also leads lovely, into isn't it? other authors. It's amazing. And, Let's have and a listen. Yeah. But spared what only the most generous soul would call his life. And you too might be so lucky. Then we introduced ourselves name, age, diagnosis, and how we're doing today. I'm Hazel, I'd say when they get to me. Sixteen. Thyroid originally, but with an impressive and long settled satellite colony in my lungs, and I'm doing okay. Once we got around the circle, Patrick always asked if anyone wanted to share, and then began the circle jerk of support. Every there you go. I, I'm afraid I just oh. I badly did it. It's a very, very good book. Um, it's on my it's on my list. I've heard Mark raving about it, which is why I I chose it today. Um, but it is a really, really fantastic book. One of my um, my daughter's mum. One of my daughter's friend's mum has got uh, cancer at the moment, and it's just. She's so strong. It's incredible. Um, and uh, having lost several people in my family to cancer as well, this book is, all I can tell, having not even listened to it, um, it's incredible, isn't it, Mark? It is, and, and, and speaking as someone who got put or almost got put on the transplant list and, and was told I had about a year to live if I didn't get a liver, um, it hit home quite a lot. The, the, the characterization is amazing and dead on. It's imp and it's being made into a movie soon as well. That's cool. how amazing it is. Cool. So 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 uh, get the book um, first. Uh, the audio yeah, book, or the, or the you know the, the 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 actual factual book or the Kindle version, and then um, you can go from there. By the way, uh, Amazon uh, owns Audible, so if you have a Kindle, you can have WhisperSync uh, ready, so you can actually read the book for a bit and then you can listen to it 
for a bit and then you can read it for a bit and then you can listen to it for a bit but you can actually progress through the story uh, anyway on to the next part of the show a show which had part of the show which had me sniggering quite a bit on 10 on friday how many takes did i do of this mark oh god oh blimey um it of, of your recording it was probably about 10 minutes worth of of you trying to get through this <laughs> S E H Y sexy E V. Okay, so Elon Musk and Tesla Motors has gone and got the Tesla Model Y, which is fine. That's not necessarily funny. Um, and as I said on the show on on Friday, uh, Y has been used to donate cars before. Ford used it in the 1930s to denote a car that was non-American uh, for the non-American market. So it was an, uh, an overseas model. Uh, they used the term Model Y. Uh, but now, if you take all of the cars that Tesla now owns uh, copyright or, or uh, trademarks to, the Model S, the Model E, the Model X, and the Model Y. What does that spell? Sexy! Woo! <laughs> or, or I just want to do the, 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 what's that character oh, um, in, in Austin Powers? Sexy. Oh, um, fat, fat, fat bastard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you see, we can say, Brits, Brits can say bastard, can't we? Without it being a, a curse word. Okay then. Uh, but Americans, I believe, <laughs> they, they, they view that as much more of a curse word than we do in Britain. Am I right, Mark? Well, yeah, it used to be up until sort of 40, 50 years ago. And then people kind of went, it's not really a big deal anymore. And and now it's just a general, ah, you're old bastard kind yeah. of Yeah, word. Eddie Eddie Izzard did a fantastic sketch on that uh, in, I think it was, I want to say it was Circle, I think it was, in which he said, the way you say it. The, the oh, we're a bastard or bastard. Yes, determines whether whether it's it's uh, whether it's good, and also talking about other other um, dual meanings for words, and and uh, I'm not going to go into that because that probably is a little bit rude. Anyway, uh, te <laughs> sexy Tesla. Tesla is sexy. We already knew it, and now they're going to go with Y. What other letters do we think they are going to trademark next? Um, Deb. I and T, and then you can stream them all together and have sexiest. Oh, yes. Yes, Brad. Uh, they already have two S's, so I guess you could spell sexiness with just an N. N. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Mark? I think L O N, and it's eventually going to become the sexy Elon line. <laughs> I reckon it's this big ego trip he's on to have, and they have them all lined up, and they all have personalised plates with the just single letters on it, and he'd be stood in front of it posing while the car spat out "sexy Elon" in the background. <laughs> Oh, I like it. <laughs> That's terrible. Moving on quickly. According to What Car Magazine in the UK, um, BMW is at the stage where it's trying to decide what it's going to do for the i5. Now, this is a weird story uh, because it's like BMW hasn't decided yet whether it's going to make a sedan or an SUV and it hasn't decided whether it's going to be all electric or plug-in hybrid or range extended. But BMW is now thinking about it. Um, and this is a story really that we don't need to necessarily dwell on. But it does bring out the fact that, hey, BMW seems to finally be sitting up and taking notice and I might have to eat my words because for years I was like, BMW's having a joke. Come on, the the the, the Mini E, lovely car, but... <sighs> and then the Active E, great car, but <sighs> they're not actually making it. Uh, i3, okay, it's, a, it's not a bad looking car, but... <sighs> and the i8, but now the i5, potentially, Mark. What would you like the i5 to be? Ah, oh, what would I like it to be? I think it should be a little bit bigger than the i3 with five seats. A, a normal, what I would consider a normal sized car in the UK. So sort of uh, golf sized. And, and it should be pure electric with the option to have more batteries rather than an additional engine. Brad? I kind of agree, except um, I would use almost the three series as a as a kind of a scale. I'd yes. like to see it kind of like that. Only you wouldn't really need the hood and you know the trunk, if you will. They could just put that kind of interior room. Yep, I do, Deb. 
I don't really know what to think because every time I hear you say I-5, I think of the interstate I-5 freeway going from Seattle to San Diego. So, um, You want a I'm car really- that's as long as that like a highway. Welcome to the I-5 in your <laughs> I-5. Five. Yeah, that's all I can think of. So I'm not uh, <laughs> a songwriter here. I'm thinking of some way to... Yes, I five a song. on the I so five. As we say in America, take the fifth on that. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> as long as we still have a fifth amendment, I guess I'll take it. Um, okay. Um, all right. So, uh, the Model X drew lots of crowds this weekend at the Palo Alto store opening. Um, <laughs> Now, Palo, Palo Alto obviously is the home of Tesla Motors. People think of Fremont, California as being the home of Tesla Motors, but it isn't. The design studio is in, um, obviously in, in further south, but the, the actual head office, I believe, is in Palo Alto. Um, Palo Alto itself, not far from, from Fremont, um, they, they opened up a store in Palo Alto and they took the Model X, the latest version of the Model X there. Um, it's drawing crowds. People want it. I was dismissive of the of the uh, Model X initially because I didn't like those doors. Oh, the doors are amazing. I love it. Do you, but love but it. now now I'm starting to go the other way. I mean, it's, maybe it's like the i the, the the i three. Maybe it's a car that needs to grow on you, and then it starts to make sense. And having dealt having now got um, kids that are older, I can actually see the benefit of having the 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 up doors because um, I swear that my kids have got worse at getting out of the car as they've got older so they bang the doors more often because they're bigger and they're growing they're going through a growth spurt so if the doors just went up they would never hit the car next to us it'd be brilliant yeah and, and I, I mean people are in the chat room are saying you need quite a lot of overhead room but only if you park indoors and i i mean it's a big car anyway i'm not sure how many uk garages it would fit in or european garages it would fit in so if it's out on the street and and parking i mean it wouldn't be a problem the model s would be a pain if i was doing my weekly or monthly as i do at shop because i hate shopping um because you have to be so close to the cars either side the doors go up you suddenly don't have to worry about that i want all the doors to go up you see that's one of the things i said about the twizzy the twizzy does that obviously did that that's that's the one benefit i had to the twizzy was i could just put the doors up and i used to leave the doors up obviously because there was no locks on the car so you just used to leave the doors up and then i'd be in the store and i'd hear woo, 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 woo. the alarm would be going off because someone had got in it you know <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't do that with a model x though the best part of the X is the specs. Uh, I did the the four-wheel drive? Um, yeah, I mean, the, four, the, four, the uh, all-wheel drive performance model. Oh, my gosh. What appeals to me about the X is less the doors, it's the space in the back. Um, yeah, you I could mean, get your once whole... Once time, I did music full-time as a touring musician, and I had a van, and I keep fantasizing about, not you know, even if I don't go back to music full-time, is having a, an electric van that I could sleep in. And, and the room inside, if you take the seats out and all the different configurations, you could put a queen-size mattress, I think, or a double-full mattress yep. back there. And I yep. have you know, fantasies of building a really lightweight aluminum frame and sticking it in back with the X and putting like an air mattress on top, which is also light. Then you can stash all the gear underneath and have this essentially electric camper that could go and stay in U.S. camping grounds. Wow, plug in. So that's it's, pretty it's sweet. Been, and I think the reason Americans are so into it is we are in love with our SUVs. I mean, you know, we you can't be an American without a, a sport utility vehicle. So the S is going to appeal to that. I mean, the X... I'm all confused. I had the sexy thing. Um, the X is going to appeal to a lot of people on that, and especially families with kids. So I'm not surprised because a lot of the resistance, I think, to electric vehicles has been that they don't have the large size for all your stuff yeah. and your kids and our long distances out here. So and yeah, as, I'm appeal. He's and the thing. As somebody who's tried to get 40 African drums in a um, second-generation yeah. Honda Prelude, I can tell you, as a musician, you need more space. You need more space. Oh, you do. Um, may I ask, is our audio as glitchy as the video? No, your audio is fine. Good. Okay. okay. Just so, joking. <laughs> so, yeah, we can hear you, but you're just doing a bit of robot dancing there, a little bit. Um, all right, Mark's doing... Okay, we're Cylons, I have to confess. I didn't tell you. <laughs> we're Cylons. I'll start going. Okay. Oh, dear BSG rocks. Okay. I say that in case my, my sweetie's watching. Uh, I, have to, I call everything a Cylon. Yes. That's weird. 
Yes. Yeah, there's some good TV. There was some good TV uh, when, when, you know, BSG was good. I like that. And, and, you know, it also made it okay to say frack before fracking. Yes, I love fracking. And well, now you can say like frack no to fracking. Just finishing up season four, so don't tell me what happens. We're <gasps> all caught up in the drama. <clears throat> okay. No, we're not going to say anything. We're not going to say anything. Okay, uh, we skipped a story, and now Mark we is going to have to cut and paste and push that story down. <laughs> I've already done it. Already Electric done conversions. It. Do they have a certain something that factory EVs never have? If you're uh, wanting to combine the joy of driving a classic car with zero emissions, then yes, said Green Car Reports, or Green Car Reports. Anthony Ingram found out this week. A little bit of background. Anthony, obviously based in the UK, he was over in the US and took a drive in an all-electric VW Bug, uh, converted by um, West Coast EV, I think. Or what, I can't remember the name of the company now, and I've forgotten. Oh, that's, forgotten. That's terrible. That's I, terrible. I that's terrible. Anyway, I just, know, I, just know, I just have a personal friend see this got a bug version. I don't know. And Our it was brilliant. Did it. They call it the lightning bug. <laughs> and I think it's just great. I think I think um, Deb, you've you've done conversion uh, workshops. Conversions really do have a valid place to play, don't they? Well, they they do. Um, we at the, in Siva like to say that the highest form of recycling is to convert a engine a gas car to electric. Because think about it, you're not putting all the dead car bodies in the landfill. You're keeping it on the road. Yep. And um, what a high form of recycling. It's that whole reuse, repair, you yep. know, reduce, reuse, yep. repair. So, yeah. And it's EV West. Thank you, chat room. I knew it's I'd got, it. I got okay. it wrong. Thanks, chat room. So it was EV West, who the guys, who they were the ones who did the, the BMW that went up uh, Pikes right. Peak earlier this year. Um, and that's one of my goals, actually, this, this coming year, is to get to Pikes Peak. I want to be there and see the EVs go up. I, I just would love to do it. And before the race, obviously, or afterwards, when the road back is back open, I'd like to drive a standard Nissan Leaf up Pikes Peak as well. Just to say I've done it, I think it'd be cool. Right, something that I am never, ever probably going to do is buy a prop from a film and then convert it into an electric vehicle. Mr. <laughs> James Bond, I mean, Elon Musk bought James Bond's underwater lo lotus from, I've forgotten the film that it was in, it was the 1977. You me. No, it me. wasn't. It's the spy who loved me. Are we Thanks. supposed to sit there and do the bond? It was the under... It's the spy who loved me. Sold an auction in London for 90... Sorry, 96. 966,560 dollars. Um, and uh, the, the, the buyer's identity remained uh, a mystery. But uh, Jalopnik um, has confirmed that it was Elon Musk. Um, and he wants to install an electric drivetrain in it from a Tesla Model uh, Model S or whatever and turn, transform it into a road-going car. Well, good for Elon. What fun. This is just oh. awesome. Uh, Mark, does this go with our theory that he has actually got an underground layer underground in the I, water? I think he's got underground layers. He's got volcano layers. I, I think he's he's got a big zeppelin in the sky somewhere where he flies up to in his in his grasshopper for to take off and land in thing he he is i i think he's gonna have some plan to take over the world at some point i'm just trying to remember um he is 42 now does that sound oh, about right shush, don't say things like that oh, i got it right he's 42 which makes him a gen xer so oh. he, he was born in 1971 um so he would have been six when this film came out so no wonder this is like a boyhood fantasy for him. Maybe this is his game all along, you know, make lots of money and then buy the James Bond uh, submarine car and then go somewhere and make his little lair. Well, gee, I would if I could. <laughs> and some of us Gen Xers, I think we're OK. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm not I'm not actually a Gen Xer. I'm right at the end of Gen X. I am spiritually a Gen X, but I was born in 79, so I'm technically not a Gen X. I missed well, out by about a year. Which is the end of the greatest generation, and I'm like on the cusp. So yeah. I, I consider myself a Gen Xer, though. I am I am spiritually a Gen Xer. Um, mm. I do not ascribe to the previous generation. Your generation, Mark. <laughs> <sighs> what, what? My generation's <laughs> fine. You just went and messed up the world for us. <laughs> and we're having to fix it. <laughs> there we go. 
Anyway, that really is it for today's show. Thank you so much to to Thanks. Deb and Brad for taking part in today's show. Um, Deb, you you came up with a little something, didn't you? You have your guitar with us. Oh God, I did, and this is so stupid. But be, being that um, someone once reviewed one of my live shows and says I don't, t- I take all the risks I want to. So okay, well we're going to say goodbye first, so we'll give okay, let you get ready. I'll, I'll see if I can, and then we'll we'll play, play you. You can play jingle. us out. Um, so, uh, Mark, we will not be here next week. Uh, no. We'll be doing a pre-recorded of some description. It might be a pre-recorded show like this. It might be an on-the-road show. If that, uh, if well, <laughs> if Elon Musk is not playing with his submarine car, I mean, it's basically, <laughs> basically what it is. Um, should we, if we do actually get to interview him, should we ask him about the submarine car? <laughs> Sure. We, <laughs> to ask if we can have a ride at it. Yes. Yes. Will you will you literally drive us in it when it's Can done? we have the first test drive <laughs> and we we take it down the seven um estuary? Uh, if we took it down the seven estuary, which has the, the second highest tidal level in the world, or is it a third? I can't remember. Um second. Second. Uh it would probably never come back. And neither <laughs> would we. I wish to live. I wish to live, Mark. I wish to live. Uh, but in the meantime, um, do come back and tell us um, what you think of the new website at www.transportevolve.com. We are trying to put up stories on a daily basis. Um, uh, We're not we, trying to. We are. We are. Awesome. Um, we did get a lot of criticism from one person this week who said, oh, uh, you've got ads on your site and blah, blah, blah. Well, we, look, Mark and I are trying to make a living here. At the moment, Mark and I are tr- uh, essentially doing this in our spare time. And ultimately, once we start bringing in sensible amounts of money, we'll devote all of our time to Transport Evolved, which means then the site, instead of getting two stories a day, we'll get three, as many as come four, out. as many as we can do, as many as we can cover. But at the moment, we are you are going to have to put up with this being a bit sporadic because we have day jobs as well. Um, and I have to write for other people and Mark has to do other things as well. But eventually, the site will get bigger and better. We've got um, a quick charge coming up soon. We've also got our first um, charged, charged up. up this week haven't we mark coming through down, do. down the pipe so that's going to be great and um so just keep tweeting at us on twitter on facebook on google plus and until next time folks uh don't forget to plug in take it away deb see you soon okay brad this is for you and your vault for having me here today thank you i, I that doesn't guarantee that it's any good but it's it's the thought that counts <clears throat> Ah, it's already screwed up. Roll out the vault. Power to the people, the vault. Only use gas when you need to. American technology, A1 grade. Using electrons that are homemade. Cruising down the heartland on the interstate. Let your dollars go and vote to roll out the vault. It's her electric guitar here. <laughs> There you go. Woo! Over my coffee this morning. <laughs> I need more or less. That's not bad considering she had nothing when she got here. Yeah, I know. I was hearing like really, you know, really shred guitar back there. Lots of distortion.